Wrinkles. They happen to the best of us. But what exactly are these strange lines that grace our bodies and how do we cope with them? Well, to understand wrinkles, we first need to understand the largest organ of the human body. It's not our brain, not our lungs, it's not even our large intestine. It's our skin! On average, adults are wearing around eight pounds of skin on top of their skeletons. It measures out to be about 22 square feet. That's an entire half of a ping pong table. Think of your skin as a structure that's held together by three components, collagen, elastin, and glycoaminoglycans, or GAGs for short. When any of these three things gets damaged or loses strength, it weakens the overall structure, and when there's not enough structure to hold your skin in place, it falls down, therefore creating the appearance of wrinkles. You're not necessarily getting more skin, it's that the skin that's there is spread out more because of a lack of structure. So, what makes wrinkles appear on your body anyway? Let's start with the intrinsic stuff, aka the things that occur naturally in your body that you 1000% cannot avoid no matter how much you pray it away. Once you're out of your teens, you start to produce less and less collagen, a critical protein that gives your skin strength. You know how you could do a seemingly infinite amount of push-ups as a kid, but now, as an adult, doing five push-ups is exhausting? Your collagen is feeling the same way. Your aging body also produces less elastin, which, as the name suggests, helps out with skin's elasticity. So when you smile or frown, your skin bounces back to where it's supposed to be. Here's some good news, though. Intrinsic aging isn't the leading cause of wrinkles. That's where extrinsic aging comes in. Extrinsic elements are the things that occur outside your body. What we eat, where we go, how we live, and you'll be happy to know that there's a lot we can control with them. Let's start with a popular culprit, UVA and UVB rays. They directly attack our precious supplies of collagen and elastin, so by laying on tanning beds and not wearing sunscreen, you are only helping those wrinkles arrive faster. None of us are trying to crisp up like bacon before we're 50, so you definitely want to stay out of the sun when you're out and about. Here's a no-brainer, smoking. Aside from the lung cancer and the loss of your voice box and other super fun side effects, smoking cigarettes also causes wrinkles because it restricts blood flow to the skin. You're effectively suffocating your skin because without blood flow, it's unable to get oxygen and other important nutrients. Without those precious elements, your skin is unable to stay strong and taut. But even if you've been a smoker for years, there's still hope for you. Quitting almost definitely starts to slow down any more damage you're causing yourself. And bonus, your breath will definitely smell better too. How about all those delicious margaritas you've been knocking back all summer? The hard truth is that alcohol dehydrates us. It's a big factor in how hungover you get, and it also zaps lots and lots of moisture from the skin. Drier skin equals more wrinkles, plain and simple. Sadly, you can even get wrinkles simply from making a lot of facial expressions because constantly making an expression causes collagen to break down in that area, similar to folding a piece of paper over and over again in the same place. However, that does not mean you're gonna completely give up smiling, right? Now, if you're sitting there thinking, wow, all the things I love in life will give me wrinkles, my world is shattered. One, you're not wrong, but hey, them's the breaks. And two, stop furrowing your brow and listen to all the crazy treatments you can use to try to prevent those wrinkles. A popular one is Botox or botulinum toxin type A if you nasty. It literally paralyzes muscles in your face so that your skin lays flat, but it only lasts about three months. The most intense and invasive anti-wrinkle procedure is a facelift also known as a rhytidectomy. You know how it's fun to take your cat's face and stretch it back? That's basically what a facelift is on a human, only it's permanent. 
or I guess I should say semi-permanent because about five years and roughly $8,000 later, the skin on your face and neck could end up relapsing. At the end of the day, isn't it so much easier to embrace aging and all the wrinkles that come with it, especially since it's literally unavoidable? Besides, people can really tell if you're trying too hard to avoid getting old. You're not fooling anybody by not being able to raise your eyebrows after too much Botox. Wrinkles or whatever, just embrace your face.